we're going to turn the lights back off. Sorry about that. Uh, that's a great way to start. <laughs> we're going to do pelvis next. We're going to do supine pelvis first. So you want to, of course, get your patient straight as always. Once you have the patient straight, there are several things you need to do. Number one, make your immobilization devices. You're probably going to have either the feet tied with a piece of styrofoam or you're going to have a backlog. Either way, what that does, as we've discussed on many occasions, is it creates a situation where the legs from the ankles all the way to the hips kind of stay as one unit. It becomes more reproducible. Whenever you move the feet, the entire pelvis moves. If you have the feet unbound and say on a knee rest, then everything moves independently. <laughs> if you have the feet locked into place, nothing moves independent of the hips. From the hips, knees, and feet will stay all one unit and it will become more reproducible every day on a, on a daily basis. So make whatever mobilization device you're going to make. Make sure the arms, the hands are up on their chest. You don't want to have the hands on the abdomen. What that does is it's going to push the small bowel down toward the pelvis, possibly in a different way every day. You're going to have enough variation every day when you treat these due to bowel gas, bowel contents, and, and bladder contents. You don't want to add like having the hands pushing things around to that mix either. Plus, you don't want to treat the hands. So have the hands high up on the thorax. Gets everything out of the way. So hands are in the right place. You're going to have possibly just a comfortable headrest of some type of pillows using what I use at my facility. There's lots of other little things that you can use, but it's not really important as long as they hold their head still and they're relatively comfortable. The next thing you need to take into mind is this is an old fashioned simulation and you're not doing a CT sim and sometimes even if you do do a CT sim, your doctor's going to require contrast. As we discussed in class, there are four kinds of contrast. I started with three, it's four. You can have them have oral contrast, which is going to show small bowel. They need to have that oral contrast at least 45 minutes ahead of their study. You can have rectal contrast, which is going to show the rectum. You can have IV contrast, which is going to actually circulate through their body and after a certain period of time will show up in the bladder. So now we've got small bowel, we've got bladder, we've got rectum. Last thing that you can possibly do is a urethrogram on a prostate. Um, a urethrogram is basically where they sterilize the end of the penis, they squirt some contrast into the urethra, and then clamp it off. It's pleasant for everyone involved. But that's just going to show where the urethra goes through the prostate itself. Most physicians can find the prostate with having a urethrogram, but you may still see that, oddly enough. That's all I've got to say about that. So, four kinds of contrast for a pelvis. Rectal, oral, urethrogram, and IV. All of those should be done before you really get going. You don't want to get halfway into your stem and go, oh, we need this for a contrast up there, honey. Go ahead and take care of all that right now. You've got the ballpark, you've got your mobilization devices made, you've got your contrast done. The next thing you're going to do is ballpark. We're going to pretend that we're doing a prostate simulation for this particular example. Why? Because it's easy and it shows everything we need to see and it's the possibility of your urethrogram as well. For a prostate, you can palpate the greater trochanter, basically where your hip bone comes out. If you poke around and find, find where your hip bone sticks out, that's actually your, the, at the end of your greater trochanter. Nine times out of ten, that prostate is right in line with that. I have, that is the easiest palpation to do because it's not uncomfortable for everyone. You don't have to feel around anywhere else. And it works 99% of the time. So if you palpate that greater trochanter, just put your laser dead on that. We're going to use her hip socket as the greater trochanter. Because guess what? It's right in line with that. Up, down, in, out. Put your laser on the greater trochanter. Actually, to make it easier for Candy to see, we're going to use it the shows up great. tippy hip of this. Yep. Either way works. Yep. 
but wherever you palpate, just go in out or up down and in out to that. Left right, you're going to basically center on the pelvis. If you have the sheet down far enough that you can see kind of where the base of the penis starts, just center on that. It's pretty easy to get in the middle of the pelvis as a ballpark. So, greater trochanter, left right to the midline. Now we're going to go fluoro. Now there's gonna be two parts to this. We're gonna go out and we're gonna fluoro the AP. Once you decide exactly where you need to be, call the doctor, the doctor will fluoro and do some minor adjusting. Once that's done, notate everything except for the vertical. We don't know how deep we're going to treat yet. We, all we've done is ballpark up down. So notate everything except for the vertical. We're going to come in the room and the first thing we're going to do is just dot, just put a dot right where the CR is. We don't want to mark it just in case we have to move it. But you're just going to put a dot there. You can mark it, but I like to go ahead and dot since we're not really where we need to be yet. That's all we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and rotate to a lateral. Once again, making sure that you clear all the way around. Typically, you stand where the camera is, and you look, and you make sure. More often than not, you're going to have an incidence with the table and the image intensifier than you're going to have with your patient. So that's where to look first. I'll harp on that a bunch because I've seen people run into the table with the image intensifier and I've done it myself. Now, now that we have everything set, I actually don't have my field size set. I'm not going to bother with that. The field size is going to be what the doctor sets. Once you get to the lateral, you're going to go straight out of the room and you're going to fluoro again and then you're going to, on fluoro, set your depth. Once you have the depth set that you think it needs to be, call the doctor. The doctor's going to come in and make adjustments. Let's say, for instance, they move up two centimeters like I just did. We don't want to have made any other marks on the anterior because your divergence as projected on your patient is going to change because now your anterior is going to be closer to the target. So once the doctor's moved the patient up and says, that's cool, make absolutely certain that they don't move left, right, or in, out up down is the only move you need to make on the anterior you've set left right and in out the only thing you don't know is your depth so that is what we just did we set our depth we notated everything including the vertical including the vertical on your anterior setup portion of your setup sheet so we've got all of our stuff written down we've got information about our gantry and our table and our collimator from the anterior We've got information about our gantry, our collimator, our table from the lateral now. We've got this person set up in three points now. We've got 3D set. Once you've done that, you can come in, and now you can mark, mark, and then rotate up and get the image intensifier out of the way, mark the other side. Rotate back over. Notate your SSD. Read your SSD here. Notate that. Now we're ready to take a film. Center your II, set your TFD, put your marker on, take your film. Get your film run. What I usually do, now this is taking a big chance, I'll take an anterior and a lateral and get them approved at the same time. You're taking a chance that he's not going to like one of them going to change his mind and you're going to have to redo the whole thing. Nine times out of ten on a pelvis they don't do that. So I'm going to take this film, set that film aside, rotate up, and since I'm in here and rotating up I'm then going to read this SSD as well and I'm going to take the anterior film as well. And I'm going to go run both of those. Once I've run both of those films and he's approved the film, I will then come back in and I'm going to take my other two x-rays. I'm going to take my right lateral, read that SSD, take that film, rotate on down to the PA, read that SSD, take that film and run those two. Now you've got all four films 
taken and run. You've read all four SSDs. The last thing you need to do is take separations. You're going to take an anterior separation and a lateral separation, just right on your marks. You always wait to take any separations at the end because a lot of times when you put that caliper up underneath the patient, they're going to lift up and move. That's the very last thing you want to do in any circumstance is do anything that's going to cause your patient to move. And since you know that taking a separation probably will do that, wait until you're completely finished, you've got all your marks on your patient, you've got all your SSDs, you have all the information you need, take your separations last. So we've got SSDs for four directions, we've got separation for AP and lateral, we're pretty much set. You've got four films, you will then extract any tubes and stuff that you've got inside the patient for various contrast purposes. Take your pictures. Lateral picture, anterior picture, and full body picture. Making sure once again that you don't have just a sheet over the patient that's a morgue picture. You want to be able to see what you did with the feet, how the pelvis looks, and where the hands are, and what kind of headrest is happening. Just in case you forget to write something down. That's the ins and outs of an anterior, uh, 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 a supine simulation. Here in just a sec, we're going to move Pixie into a prone position and we'll go over prone pelvis simulation.